what can you do with automation? You could have as many systems as you want. It's really more about the vision that you want to create in your business and how much will you be able to absorb and learn in a short period of time. Because automation can be set up really quickly once you understand what you need and what you want. Welcome to the Kind Boss Podcast, brought to you by Outsourcing Angel, an Australian-based social enterprise that specializes in helping business owners free up their time and reduce staffing costs, while helping to create employment opportunities for people in developing countries. Visit OutsourcingAngel.com today. Now, let me welcome your host, Lynn Pedetti. Hello, kind listeners. I'm your host, Lynn Pedetti. Today, we'll be speaking to a kind boss, George Gasker, automation consultant and CEO of Three Steps Business. George founded Three Steps Business as a product of his obsession for creating better and more efficient processes. George has been working with coaches, consultants, and service providers as a marketing automation consultant, implementing systems using active campaigns since 2013. Since beginning his entrepreneurial journey, He has successfully helped hundreds of businesses grow and scale and continues to be at the forefront of next generation automation systems that can help you build a next level business. Listen on as he shares how his system of marketing automation helps businesses scale and amplify their impact in the community. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Kind Boss Podcast. And today I have George Gasker. Welcome. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much for having me. Super yeah. excited to have a chat with you today. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, I love the topic of automation because, you know, anything to do with like freeing yourself up from your business and having things all automated and seamlessly integrated is my love. And I wanted to talk to you today about your passion, which is marketing automation. So let's talk about yeah, your business and what do you do for people? Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Lynn. But basically, we just help uh, services businesses, coaches, consultants, and freelancers to get started with automation, basically have the right plan and make sure the system is running smoothly. What that actually means is having to create a good plan, a good solid foundation for them to grow and scale from there. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, why do people usually decide they need marketing automation? What kind of challenge or problem do they usually have? And then they're like, okay, I need help here. That's a super interesting question, Lynn. Well, what happens is that normally people see marketing around. That's really the truth. They see marketing around and they see automation as the way to free themselves of the business, which is as business owners, what we all want, really want is to get out of the business and be able to help more people, right? Or make more money or et cetera. It's usually three things. They want to help more people make more money and have more freedom, right? So those three things is really what they're looking for. So they see automation as a vehicle to achieve that. What really triggers them to get it started is tools. So they see marketing around tools that they will be able to use to make that happen. Be an active campaign, one of those tools. Okay, so is it because they want to attract leads? What to do with the leads coming in? Do they start off doing manually? Like what do they start off with before they go into the actual tool? The actual tool, yeah, normally they start manually until they say to the point that, you know, this is really hard. I can't track it. I want to see more. I want to see more data. I want more leads or I have too many leads coming in. I can't control them. And those are normally the two main reasons why people will come in. They want more or they have too much and they don't know how to handle it. Yeah. And it's kind of a waste. You put, sometimes we put a lot of effort in attracting those emails and leads and then we're kind of not really optimizing it. We're not really doing much with it. So what are the, some of the things that we can really truly achieve with these incoming leads that we're getting? Oh, look, there's so many things you could do. Like really the way I say that automation is a blank canvas and specifically we're talking about active campaigns, a blank canvas and you can do absolutely anything you would like to do within it but everything starts just like a painting right everything starts with the vision so if you have no vision and your vision is very limited to i want more leads but yeah but how does it look like so you need to have a little bit of plan around the journey and the customer journey you want to take this lead through to be able to have a bit of an idea of how much and what can you do with to answer your question what can you do with automation you could have as many systems as you want it's really more about the vision that you want to create in your business and how much will you be able to absorb and learn in a short period of time. Because automation can be set up really quickly once you understand what you 
need and what you want. Yeah. So what would you recommend? Let's just say a lot of business owners are doing LinkedIn marketing, right? So we're getting, yeah. we're talking to people and we've got these, yeah. I guess, people talking back to us and interested in us. What would be your recommendation to convert them into like a lead or, or having their emails in your system so you can actually turn them into a client? Got it. Okay, cool. So to answer your question, let me tell you a little bit the structure that we use. Cool. So I divide automation in three main stages. The first one is attraction, second one, conversion, third one, retention. Actually, there's a fourth one that is ascension, which is basically the upsell, kind of keeping them in, in your loop, right? In your world, buying from you as a client. So what happens with the attraction level, there's a pre stage in there, which is all the prospecting side of things, which is LinkedIn, right? Mm-hmm. Social media, LinkedIn, etc. All those sources will come into our attraction system that's basically a lead capture, right? So at that point is what we will have lead magnets for. So it's having a guide, a checklist, an ebook, and all that, that you will be able to have this conversation with these people in LinkedIn and tell them, you know, what's your best email address to send you this guide? Or what's your best email address to send you this asset? Then you mm-hmm. capture their email address, you take it into, into a form, basically you do it manually because there's no automation that you could do LinkedIn to the yes. other end. And then from there, then your system will trigger the rest of the journey. Yeah. And would you say to, because uh, I know, let's just say we have a lead magnet. We can create a many, many lead magnets. Is it, is it good to kind of always separate the, all the lead magnets? I, I guess my challenge is like having so many lead magnets, so many sequences. Yeah. What's your advice around like keeping it minimal or, or going really specific and having a lot of sequences? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So look, it goes back to your target market, right? So if you know your prospect really well and you know, let's say they have three main problems, then focus on those three main problems. Then have an asset for each one of those three main problems as an entry point. But then from there, once you have your lead magnet, just start teaching about your core. So -hmm. you don't need to create too many sequences. It's actually one sequence about your core messaging, but then it's three entry points with three different messages according to the pain point that they're having at that point in time. Makes sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes so sense. Just simplify the system just by having a core sequence in the back end. Yeah, love it. So I know you know, you're all about training as well. It's not about, like you said, it's not about getting the tool. Like you have to actually know what to do. So what's included in the kind of training that you offer people? Yeah. And so we, I focus the first part of the training that we normally do for clients and what we do as well when, while working with private clients is the planning. Right. So that's the most important thing. As I was saying, you can have a painting without having the vision of what that will look like. So it's starting from there. It's starting from understanding your prospects. So you could create those three different assets, right? And to get them into your core messaging, which is also part of your prospect. Right. So if you know your prospect, you know, you know your messaging because you can't have a business without clients. So that needs to be matched to them rather than just because I want to say it. Remember, it's not about you, it's about the client. Right. So it's always, um, it's, so it's part of that. So, but it's just focusing on that training and the planning and the, the systems and automation thinking, which is different because the biggest mistake and one of the biggest mistakes that people do is they go and hire a VA in your case, yes. right? Like talking to you or an expert. And then they go and tell them, I want my system to look like that, but they give an example of someone super famous. Let's say Russell Brunson, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to do what Russell Brunson is doing. It's like, Okay, but your business, but you're an accountant. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so is this a bit of work we need to do before to get there? So it's, it's great to have that ideal of uh, influences and so on. But then it's how do you translate that vision that you've got to your VA or your expert? You can tell them, look, this is what I want. And what this means to you, step by step will be something like this. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. Because as we know, experts, web developers, anyone that is in systems is very literal. So mm-hmm. a lot of them are not very creative. I consider myself a little bit gifted that I have a little bit of creativity together with systems thinking, but most systems people, they are not creative. Yes. Right. So yeah. they either have one or the other. That's why you have graphic designers working with web developers in web development companies, right? And they're not one person. So that's, that's the whole thing. So it's creating that vision, creating that plan and that's the initial part of the training without that you wouldn't have the foundation for you to be able to go and build more things around attraction conversion retention etc sales process as an example on the conversion stage it's critical for you to know how that works what are the steps that your va needs to build for you 
Yeah, so it's really important that they learn the training so they know what it is about their business and strategize it, right? And then Correct. you can hire the technical person to actually execute. And also Correct. once you understand it fully, you can kind of adapt and, and mold to if your business change. You can, I think sometimes people hire a VA and go, I just want my VA to do some magic for me. Like just, just make me more money, make me more sales. And it's exactly. like, exactly. they don't want to do the homework, but they, you have to do the homework. But once yeah. you do the homework, then it's cheap to kind of keep it going, maintain it because you yeah. know what to do. And usually the homework is, seems hard. It's one of those things that is very daunting just because they don't understand the thinking behind it. And that's really the key of this training is teaching you that. So the key of that thinking so you'll be able to quickly, super fast, stay from there and start creating plans in the future. Yeah, yeah. Another service that was really interesting that you do, which I had never heard of, which is kind of the active campaign monitoring and, and maintenance service. Like I normally hear it for websites, but I don't really hear it for active campaigns. So tell me more about that and give me some case study uh, on clients and why you decided to start something like that. Yeah, well, it is an interesting question. And the, the source of that was actually a pro an internal problem that we had in our business ourselves. Right. So what, what we were doing for clients quite often was just building the system and then we hand it over to them with documentation and so on. What happens usually is that unfortunately not the full system gets used to its full potential because it is, it is automation and we are all busy as business owners and so on. We expect that to work in the background and I don't need to do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. It's magic. Yep. Well, unfortunately, not, it's not always magic and it needs some user input. Right. What happens is that we were releasing that to clients. We'll give it to them and so on but we were not monitoring that the system was working. So sometimes systems breaks, it's the internet. Things break, things, um, you know, websites stop working, a form stops capturing data, the form, the API is not working, sending the information into active campaign from the website to there and so on. So out of that, we started getting a lot of support tickets from clients from time to time. It's like, you know, our website, our form is not going into active campaign. We are losing leads. Our leads are falling through the cracks. What's happening with the system and, and so on. So we, we started seeing all this as a trend. And we were like, okay, so there's something going on here that there's not only an opportunity, but it's, it's a huge value because you know the value of a lead, right? How mm, much is it? Yeah. It's huge, right? So it's, it's losing money, really. literally just by a form, not talking to active campaign, not going into the CRM. That's just a funnel leak. After fixing all that and looking a little bit of the trends, we realized like, okay, maybe there is a service here that we can provide to clients. And then we started offering it to clients. And it's been great because number one, we can assure that the system that we set up at the beginning is actually working over time which is a little bit of insurance and assurance for, for ourselves as well, number one. Number two, we can assure that there's not going to be leaks or anything, the system is working and everything is up in the background. And number three, there's one very interesting thing about active campaign, and which is not a bad thing from them, it's not their responsibility to save the data for you. So sometimes mm. things go wrong, you may delete something that you shouldn't delete at some point, and maybe you, those, your VA happens, a couple of clients have a couple of examples in both spaces, but you just hit the right button that deletes the whole thing. Want to make a difference in others' lives? Join us in providing food, medical supplies, and daily living necessities to tribal communities living in extreme poverty in the Philippines. For as little as $50, you can feed a whole village and have peace of mind that 100% of your donations goes directly to those in need. Be a part of our OA Love Projects and visit OutsourcingAngel.com. Wow. And Active Campaign just doesn't give you any backup data it's, or anything. It's not their responsibility. It's under terms and conditions. And you may be lucky and if you might be able to, to get it. But most of the times, that's why there's few things that you need to take before you actually delete anything. Ah, okay. So what would be a typical process that you do every month or whatever the frequency is to achieve that outcome, achieve that outcome of assurance? Yep. So first of all is checking a specific systems, right? We normally offer between five and 10 systems that we will check every month. And what I mean checking is... Uh, when you say systems, am I, I, am I saying, is it like a sequence of email yeah. that whole yeah 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 it could be an automation system right so yes. as an example a contact form that goes together with an email that sends yep. the lead into the crm and active campaign right mm -hmm. so that's the system yep so as an example of that so it's checking that the form is connected to active campaign correctly and someone making sure that that's flowing now a nightmare example around that website 
gets outdated. WordPress updates things every day, right? Mm. As we know. Then the, the WordPress site is not maintained or didn't get updated at, at some point. Then this form didn't connect to Active Campaign, and uh, they didn't know after six weeks that it. Wasn't oh my connected. God! Yes. So that there was so we recovered a lot of the leads because they were saved on the website and so on. But notifications went sent to them, and it was about twenty to to thirty leads, proper leads, like warm leads that they were. Missing. That breaks my heart because you know the the thing is not for me. It's not even about that. I lost the sale. It's embarrassing the reputation that kind of that company that kind of never returned the call kind of thing. You know, and that's the most embarrassing part for me. Yeah, and I've got another example. It happened similar thing, but you know, the, in this case, it was that the form got hacked, and then it was filling in active campaign with the spam, and then they had thousands of new contacts in there within a very short period of time that needed to be not only deleted. But recovered, and the biggest problem with that is that that will affect how your emails get delivered in the future. So it's making sure that things like that are covered and you know don't happen that often. So as an example of what we will do on a monthly basis, checking that that form is working, checking that there are no spams coming in, and if there are spams, that we delete as soon as possible so that doesn't affect the deliverability of your account. When basically the, the email database is is clean. Mm, and then can you back up the data as well, I guess, so that correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, on a yeah. monthly basis. Yep, yeah, yeah. correct. So the, the backups actually work on a daily basis, but then there's some of the backups that we do a review on a monthly basis. So you actually back up the full account. So it's not only about the contacts. We back up automations. We back up, back up the tags. We back up the forms. We back up the full lot of information that is in your account. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, in terms of marketing automation as an industry or as a profession, how has it trend over time? The last, I guess, the last couple of years, what have you seen? Where do you think future will be? Do you have any insights for us? Yeah, sure. Look, it's been huge, the change. When I started back in using Active Campaign actually in 2013, there wasn't many people that were using it to start with. And the ones that were using it, it, it was people that was very advanced and what we were doing at that point. At that point, people didn't understand. It was all about social media. It was all about Facebook. It was all about all that, right? So what happened over the last couple of years, probably three years now, is been that that's, the mindset has shifted quite heavily. And then people are now working towards automation. They understand that they drive the lead. They need a database to put it somewhere so they can actually keep track of things. So the education of the, of the user to say has changed a lot over the last mm -hmm. two to three years. So that's one key change that has happened recently. But for the future where I see things happening is more integration, is more apps working around your CRM, mm. ID database. For example, Active Campaign connected to your website on a deeper level is having all the purchase data into your system without fail, is having all this information around the system but that you can see in one place and in one place. Yeah, I love that because I'm on Slack and when we have a lead, it goes into Active Campaign, then it goes into HubSpot, goes into, you know, our Slack notifications. So it's just beautiful to see. And so yeah, you just see that in the future, there's just a lot even more integration. It, yeah. yeah, it's a lot more integration, a lot easier. So right now it's relatively easy in some cases. It's really hard to integrate, but I see it's more open, more apps that are open to integrate in an easier way. Okay. Yep. So what would you say could sabotage someone from succeed, success with marketing automation? Like what, what could they be doing wrong that could, they just never get, would be able to get the result? Yeah. Three main things. The first one I mentioned before is not, it's not starting with a plan or a vision, right? So not having that idea of what they really want and just believing in the marketing, right? There's, there's a lot of marketing and hype out there that, you know, it tells you marketing automation is the solution for everything. Then you get the tool or whatever, and then you don't know what to do with it, right? So have a plan in place. That's the first thing. Second mistake that I see is that they hire people without business knowledge, right? So again, hiring a VA is great, but if they don't know anything about business, you are the business owner. You can't expect your VA to know about what's in your head and what does it mean to you. So, right, so that's your job as a business owner is translate that to the VA. So that's the second mistake that I see that will really sabotage you. It will set you back and it will take you a long time to really get traction if you're just giving snippets of information to that person who's setting it up for you, right? And, and number three is having no foundations, 
right, of, uh, of that customer journey that you want mm-hmm. to take people through. Uh, it's, it's what I call patchy automation or patchy funnels, right? That, yeah. they just, that People just, oh, I want, this, I want this webinar, I want this lead magnet, I want this, but then they create all these superficial assets and there's nothing in the background working to get the lead for you, you know, sequences that nurture the lead, that teach about you, you know, all that information is also important. Yeah, that totally. And I think it's just like every business owner should just calm down. Let's go strategically. Let's learn and let's, let's even work out who your ideal client is and what do they really want and go through your training actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, but yeah, once it's set, and setting it up right by someone like yourself and then having like a VA or something to maintain it right. and, and do All the right. kind of the ongoing set, setting out emails, doing whatever else that you need to do internally. Yeah. yeah and then definitely having that backup support with your like a monitoring service because you don't want the disaster stories to happen to you yeah where do people connect with you yeah sure you can go into our website three stepsbusiness.com that's probably one of the first point of contact and second one feel free to reach out to me on linkedin and connect i will put all the links in, in the notes i believe lynn will organize that <laughs> for us but also if you're interested in to get started with automation i've got a beginner's guide a masterclass that you could potentially attend to as well. Yeah. So. Awesome stuff. Well, the next segment that I want to go through is this is called the high five. And I'm going to ask you five questions and you just sure. have to choose this or that answer, but elaborate a little bit. So we get to know George a bit. Awesome. Cool. All right. Number one is pizza or steak? Pizza. Elaborate. Yeah, definitely pizza. I don't know. I'm a pizza lover. Always. <laughs> Always. What's your background? You're not Italian, are you? No, Colombian. A Colombian, okay. Colombian. Yeah, I, yeah. You I'm... asked me a few years back, I'll probably go for a steak. But yeah. these days, I, I don't know, I'm into pizza for some reason. <laughs> Same. I don't know whether, whether it's a winter time, but I've been craving wood fire pizza. And I've been oh, craving... it's amazing. Yeah, 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 it's so good. You can eat yeah. the whole pizza and not feel anything. <laughs> yeah, that's All true. Right. Number two, looking at cars or looking at houses? Depends of the time, I guess. Right now, looking to houses, but I love cars. <laughs> <laughs> so which one do you like window shopping most? What, what oh, window shopping, cars, totally. Cars, yeah, yeah. all right. Totally. Number three, adventure or comfort? In the middle. Can I say <laughs> that? <laughs> no? <laughs> one or okay. the other. One or the other. It's hard to choose. It's really in the middle. It's really in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll choose adventure. Why? I guess it's always, it's always something new to learn. Yeah, so yeah. it's always something new to, to explore, something new to learn. I think if you stay still, you probably will find a little progress and life in my opinion is about progress. Yeah, totally. I agree with that answer. And I think I know what you mean. It's like you want to have fun, but you still want to feel comfortable along the way, right? Yeah. You don't want to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, number four, you prefer Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, Sunday. I love Sundays. It's my chill out day. It's uh, the day that I know I won't check emails, that I know I wake up without thinking about business, without thinking about anything else. So that's sort of my day that I, but for some reason, my brain is the only day that switches off. So Saturday, you're still kind of in work mode and you still feel like you're maybe transitioning from the Friday to a yeah, Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Normally on Saturday, I still look into things a little bit in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And then Sunday, do you consciously not look at anything? Kind of like, it's like a free day. Yeah, I sort of, yeah, I kind of don't even feel like it. Do you know what I mean? So I don't mm. think it's like, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? I kind of do that on Saturday. Ah, What's going to awesome. happen next week? I love that. Okay, yeah. final question. Love or kindness? Love is kindness. So love? <laughs> love is kindness. Yeah, so That's... you choose love? You think love would uh, be the I ultimate think, Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the that's ultimate thing because if you love what you're doing, if you love the person that you're with, if you love just simply other people, then you will be kind to them. Just yeah. if you love yourself, you will be kind to other people. That is so true. It's like they say, all you need is love. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Awesome. Basically. Uh, okay, so I have last two questions for you, George. Awesome. My next one is, what does a kind boss mean to you? Kind boss means just caring about people that's that's simply just in one word for me it's about caring generally about your stuff generally about the people that you work with you know that they are not there to only serve you and your clients and and help you grow but they also have their own needs you know they also get tired they also you know need time off the same way that you need it 
you know, they, I work a lot with uh, Filipino VAs, same as, as your business. And just, you know, a lot of people treat VAs as if they are not part of your team, but really they are. So for mm -hmm. me, kind boss is just caring generally about them. Yeah. Because they will care generally about you. Caring of them as a person and not just as a, a staff member. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Love as that. As a person. Get to know them personally. You know, what are their needs? If they care about their family, probably they do the same as you do. If they want to take some time off to take the kids, you know, same as you probably want to do it, then give them a lot of, that opportunity that they will work for you and do whatever they, they need to do for you and the business if you are, you know, you care about them too. Yeah, love that answer. Okay, final question. What do you want the world to remember George for? Great question. I guess for my teachings, I guess, in a way, but mostly from the place of, how would you say, structure, right? So a lot of people, when they come to us in the business and a lot of my staff, they even come to us and they're a little bit unstructured. And so one thing that we've done really well over years is creating a structure. So every, every person that I work with, they always say, look, I was a little bit messy. I came to you and I came to the other side with a really clear structure of what I needed to do. So I think that's, that's my magic power. And probably that's what I would like people to remember me for. And, and how about on a personal level? What would you like the world to remember you for? Kindness, I would say. Generally caring about people. That's something that I know my team definitely will remember me for that. I know my family will definitely remember me for that. Oh, that's so beautiful. Well, that's a wrap up. And, you know, you are kind. That's why you are on the Kind Boss podcast. I just wanted a place where, you know, I could, you know, talk and connect with kind people like yourself. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Lynn. Bye, fun. George. Bye. Thank you for joining our podcast today. We hope this interview has inspired and humbled you to be a kind boss. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and let us know what you think about our show. If you have any questions, please visit OutsourcingAngel.com. Until then, stay kind and spread love.